Okay. We're there. Um. Oh. Okay. I will call us to order at 5.30. Holy smokes. Verizon Standard Time. There we go. Us all on time and stuff. Um, reception of guests, he says, without Thank irony. Um, we'll move right to agenda revisions. <laughs> Anything? Um, I need to add something to, um, to this, and it's under the action agenda, so maybe you just want to leave it there. Um, but is the number of membership, and I sent it to you an email for the Act 49 Articles Committee. It will be three people, and we can talk more about it. If you want to just talk about it there, that works for me. I just okay. want to make sure. Public comments and correspondence, we can skip right over. Uh, approve the minutes of November 19th, page two. Take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of November 19th. I'll second it. Is there any discussion of the minutes? Uh, not specifically of these minutes, but um, as you saw the email from Ellen today. Mm. Um, could, is there, I know. Confess I have not responded to her yet. Uh, I it's, fixed. it's fixed. Oh. It's fixed. Okay. Yeah, I still, did anybody I, reply to her just to I say did. it's fixed? I did. Oh, I thank did. you. I did reply it didn't to her. come to me when you shared it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you re reply to her too? No. No, I, I, I just did. forwarded I did. it and thought these should go to Alicia if it's. But and no, I, they don't. I didn't see that you didn't really include it. She's not on the list of people it goes to. She didn't even. She included one person. She didn't include anyone but the board. Right. Um, Instead of going to the person that has the problem. Mm hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. your reply might want to. There has that. been a problem with getting minutes up mm -hmm. there in a timely right, manner. But still well, I think there was, a, there was a misunderstanding a couple of months ago, but I know that they have. That's mm -hmm. been, that, that's that was been addressed. addressed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I just yeah, kind of wanted to make sure we were covered there. All righty. I have a Thanks. motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Budget draft number two, page four. So um, this is, nothing has really changed in this budget draft. Hey, Dave. Um, the, you'll see the net impact for taxes is still about the same. There's been a little adjustment in the Washington Central Assessments. I think it went from 196 to 192. And then there are two considerations at the bottom that Alicia are gonna to talk to. But before we get to that, if there's any questions above it, I'd be glad to, We I should say we would be glad to have them. Um, but really, that part. Three credit graduate course with Dave Melnick starting in January that's happening here in this building. Um, where I know over the course of the next few months, we're gonna learn a whole lot more about what we need to do for these kids mm -hmm. um, that we just, I don't have the answers today, but know that there's this void in what we're offering children um, in trauma, and we need to do it better. So what do you need from us? So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> support. I so the, pe the piece that I would say is that the, um, you know, we brought you these two pieces to know of where you know, Alicia's and the and her team here is trying to solve these solve these issues. What resources for kids? We can't give a pinpoint detail on like mm -hmm. how much time is it going to take. Right. I, I think I'm going to take Steve's thunder and say, you know, do we have a fully sketched out pan, plan? We don't. Um, we found out about a month ago from Nancy Thomas, who's a trustee, and we all know Nancy well, mm -hmm. trustee over at Plainfield Healthcare. They just were awarded this federal grant to expand their services. We're like, great. Mm -hmm. We'll always be glad to partner with folks so that's really exciting um, but this is where we're at and it's part of the frustration of the budget building system mm -hmm. you know we're building a budget for six to eight months from now right for actuation so that's um, the best we can give you we know that we know that mm -hmm. the kids needs have increased and the number of kids have increased so 
can right. we, it's hard to quantify that into an FTE for a type of service. Right. It is, and you'd say that seems like it shouldn't be that hard, but it is. It's really hard because you don't know when you have a kid who needs support, is it going to be a couple hours of support? Is it a couple days of support? Is it weeks of support? Is it, you know, it just, it, it can ebb and flow even within the same kid in the same yeah. family. It's just, what are the triggers? So those are the pieces, you know, and Alicia's great about building models and building plans. So it's, you know, she needs more time with this. I think she was trying to tell you she needs more time with her team to figure this out. I think last month was to give you an awareness. This mm -hmm. month I have more information okay. and more details. Um, but I also feel like <clears throat> it would be hasty for me to say this is what we need because I don't know mm -hmm. that. What I can also tell you since writing this report, I just looked. We had four new students. We now have six new mm -hmm. students since a month ago. And they are all students who... Um, come with some sort of life crisis, either homeless, um, trauma, pretty significant issues, DCF custody, um, hmm. and that that's just been in the last three weeks. We've had six new students move in, so it's a very real thing in mm -hmm. this school right now. Um, and I mean, this goes back to something that we've talked about a couple of times, where not by design, but by default, the school has become the social safety net, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the public education system has never been charged with outside of the school stabilization of families, but we recognize that in order to be able to effectively deliver education, we have to do that. So in, in my mind, um, I understand that we can't put an FTE to it, um, and I understand that we can sort of put some wavy figures toward it. Um, uh, the question that comes to my mind is, how can we call this out, right? So we, we talked pretty directly about um, tier two supports and how we're going to do this thing that we know is right for students. Um, and we gave it a name, tier two support, that we could mm -hmm. sort of talk about. And, and it, it sort of disassociated the service from who was doing it or what FTEs. And I think that was positive. I think that meant that we could talk about um, that program. Almost. Intervention, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. that that inter exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That um, and and measure its effectiveness, effectiveness, uh, sort of a little more objectively. Um, so I wonder if this is something that mm -hmm. falls into a similar bucket, right? It's not tier two or tier one or tier three, but but this is you know this is social services. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, first of all, I, I think it's positive. I'm overstaying my talking stick. But, um, but I think having some sort of a, a bucket that it sort of falls under that we can say, we're doing this thing that is outside of the official charge of a public education system because we need to do it. Um, is an important piece maybe to call out to a certain degree. What is Elizabeth's FTE now? I don't have my little form or my computer. She's a 1.0. Okay, so a full-time nurse. Mm -hmm. But you were also saying that there is a need for Mary Beth to be here longer. I think alongside of this work, we need to look at the role of guidance counselor. Yeah. So what she does in this building, she, in my opinion, and I yeah. think probably anyone who watches her's opinion is she's stretched way too thin. Mm -hmm. She teaches guidance classes. She sees children individually and in small groups. Um, and she's part of teams for kids who are in crisis. Doing that in two and a half days a week for over 200 kids is, is becoming 
harder and harder. So what we we've, we've done is we've whittled away her guidance class teaching time so she can see kids. But then she's by doing that, she's not proactively in the classrooms as often as other guidance counselors are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this kind of push and pull on where she's needed and, and how to use her resources, which she's an incredible resource. Mm -hmm. um, you know, times when a child, she spends every every recess in, that she's here out at, on the playground, navigating social situations with kids, trying to help them talk through issues. Um, but when she's only here two out of the five days, mm -hmm. a lot happens in those other three days. So it's that kind of thing where um, a lot goes on in the time that she's not here. And then Michael and I are filling in for that role, which we can certainly be bodies to fill in, but we don't have the skill set or expertise. Mm -hmm. So we're putting band-aids on. I'll meet with you know kids in crisis. He'll meet with kids in crisis. We'll take lots of notes. We'll talk to families. And then when she comes in, we kind of dump on her um, everything she's missed in the time that she was out. I'm sure it, it's an overwhelming feeling when we dump, but mm -hmm. it needs, I mean, she's the one with the skill set and the expertise to do that. And it's not that we, you know, can't talk to children when they're in crisis. We absolutely can, but we don't have the same skill background. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Um, and she's given us great tips along the way, or she shared with us, you know, in this situation or with these kids, this is what you can say, this is what you can do, this is how you can handle it. Um, I know in other buildings, the guidance counselor is mostly used for um, doing investigations and mm -hmm. doing all of that, and that's nothing that she did. She can't do any of that, you know. And we have Michael to do that. So it's this, like, what is the role of guidance counselor? It looks really different in every one of our buildings. Berlin School has a full time. We share with Callis because it's, you know, and they have just over a hundred kids, and we have well over two hundred, and you know, and she's doing jobs over there that she doesn't do here because. It's, there's just there's no commonality. And what would, what's the what would be the difference between a guidance professional and a social worker? What would the social worker do differently than what she would do, or a guidance professional? Um, I think it really depends on how you structure either of those positions. In my mind, I see a school social worker doing a lot more outreach with families, mm -hmm. um, and in being that liaison between the school and the home. So we have. We, a lot of times for kids in crisis, have what's called an Act 246 or a Coordinated Services Plan meeting where we call in professionals from DCF and Washington County Mental Health because we don't have, we, we don't go into the homes, but they can. Um, a school social worker would do more of that. You know, so I don't know, is it part-time guidance, like what we have and keep that going and part-time social worker to fill in the, the holes. And I feel like I'm not the best one to, tell you at this point what that should look like. I feel like it needs to come from all of the staff and those mm -hmm. who work with these families and kids every day, including Mary Beth. Um, and just because it was so, you know, such a short turnaround, we just haven't. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I push you on the social worker because I've been in places where we had a school social worker. And for our kids that are in the highest degrees of support, it really helped to have that flexibility of a social worker than a guidance counselor. To go into to go, to go into the home. homes, work mm -hmm. with the families. Yeah. It really it really made a difference there more. Um, but you know, as as Alicia said to me, she said, "Well, Mary Beth works with families too," and I said, "I know it's hard to really define where that yeah, line right. is." Mm -hmm. um, but it's a um, you know it, it's that piece of. Um, I think both look at the whole family along with the kid. I think the guidance counselor is a little bit more focused on, they're both focused on the kid. I think the guidance counselor is more an academic, where the social worker is more of that social behavioral being ready, where the family supports around it. Um, mm -hmm. I, but it, it, it's really amorphous. It's really hard to say there's a clear line. What's in mm -hmm. place in other schools in the district? We don't have any social workers. Even at U32 now? No. Well, we have one there for uh, that supports the SAP work uh, for 0.6 of the day. SAP. Uh, yes. Safe and it's more. Um, it's more for drug and drug alcohol. And alcohol. Okay. Sorry, I lost. Substance it. abuse yeah. for prevention. For, for prevention. Prevention. I couldn't get it either. I was Are on social. Guidance counselors yes. on a different pay scale than teachers. No, they're on the same as teachers. 
So a full-time guidance counselor costs a hundred thousand dollars. Can if the benefits are set right and the education levels that right, and the years the of experience are right. We have we have some personnel that are teachers that cost a hundred and five thousand dollars in the session. Not their salary, their benefits. So is there, Mary Beth is right now half-time Kala's half-time us, so mm -hmm. she doesn't really have more, t does she have more time? She doesn't have she more time. She is a per she, in her current state, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and I've, really I've not had that conversation with her yeah. either. Yeah. You know, um, Callis is in a similar situation to what we're in, which yeah. is. Um, well, I, I've seen her in action, like, you know, and sometimes for me, even on Wednesdays, when you have two, or at least when Herb and I used to be here at the same time, like that Wednesday when she was not here, it was where we needed her the most, you know, like even right. just to ask something or whatever was, was happening. So, and I know even for my own chat, she was really resourceful and she didn't have the, the, the time. So I, you know, I, you know, I would be on the mindset, and I know that we're not trying to come up with a solution tonight, but to try to, investigate that and possibly end up with uh, full time if possible right now, even though, because we don't know what the future is mm -hmm. for us. This is just right, it's something that we were gonna have to negotiate as a larger mm -hmm. uh, district. So be, sort of try to be ahead of the curve with that and then try to use the playing field. You know, playing field has, exp you know, that's the, all of the uh, migrant workers you know, that's what Plainfield uh, Communities, the Plainfield Health Center does too, you know, like, so they have the ability to do all of those health right. uh, parts that, that they need. And we know that this is one of the biggest things for our, we're trying to work on an achievement gap. So I agree with what Ruben was saying, this could be seen as an intervention. So getting more time with Mary Beth or whatever it is. I went to the a tier two investigation with the big federal grant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that's absolutely. happening regardless. Yeah. 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 So that's I guess my question regardless. is if, you know, I mean, the timing is horrible, as you were saying. It is what it is. And what would happen, I mean, and I've never been, I, I haven't been in this position, so forgive my ignorance, but if we said for the budget we wanted to make sure there was room for for uh, an FTE, could we, and then the playing field thing worked out so that we actually didn't need any. Could we, and so we put out to the town the budget, best we know that we might, we'll, we'll need this. So that happens every year. This is just on a right. bigger scale. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there are estimates that are in the budget all over the place. Yeah. So it's not, uh, not unheard of to do. I think, I'm sort of stealing Steve's perennial point, which is that we don't tell you how. So, uh, I mean, it's it's useful to have an understanding of what is going into mm -hmm. your decision-making process, but I don't I don't think we're here to tell you, yes, do it this way or yes, do it that mm -hmm. way. I think the real question is, are we willing to put 50 or $70,000 toward some better, um, Service for lack of a better way to put it, to sort of wraparound yeah. supports for families that are in crisis. Um, and I've been quiet. <coughs> I have no intention of voting for more money. None. Mm -hmm. None. <coughs> so I, I don't really need to participate in the discussion. I would say our administrators have the ability to create a full-time position with the buzzer that they're proposed. They would have to eliminate some things to do that. We're not preventing them from doing that. Mm -hmm. And that coupled with the possibility of what might happen with the Plainfield Health Center, I, do, I don't want to allocate money. And, say, and I don't want to allocate, I mean, floor, we could get more. And in the next three weeks, I mean, that's a volatile population. In the next three weeks, eight could leave and we would have fewer. It may not be the trend, but it's a, it's a volatile population of students and they're apt to move a lot. Yeah, but I, I think the, the guy, that's why I was focusing more on the guidance council because I think we, we can do, she already meets with families. Like we can, we can do better, you, even if she, let's say those six students move out and we don't need that 
the trauma. She's, there's still work to be done in the building that she is not getting done right now because she's so split up. The only reason I bring it up right now, because I'm not going to tell you how to do it, is that she can't, she doesn't, even as a real person, she's already half and half. Mm -hmm. So this is a much bigger conversation. If we are going to attempt to hire somebody, there's two school. you know, she's going to have to decide which mm -hmm. school she wants to go, and then the other school has to find somebody. So if we don't give you clear guidance, in if we're willing to add or not add more to the budget, it would be, to me, hard. And as I see the budget right now, I don't know where, I know that she can be very creative, but I don't think that we're providing, I see it as an intervention, I don't think we're providing the services that, and we are, we're doing a good job, but I think we could be doing more with the guy, like working more with the, for example, the, can't even remember what a uh, mindset, a uh, mindfulness. Yeah. Like she, she doesn't have as much time as she had before to do this mindfulness mm -hmm. work with the kids. It's just like it's incredibly important for, and and that's something that can be taught to the families, you know, like, uh, to the teachers, so, so that's just, the to the course, teachers. They're going to be much better. Class. Versus. And she can spend more time coaching. Is I see her almost as a coaching position in the school too, with the teachers. You know, there's some teachers that are much better with kids and trauma than others, and they've been working on, on, on this. Yeah, we we definitely are as a staff. As a staff, building our toolkits around everyone around kids and trauma. It's something we've needed to do in work. Yeah, we but mindfulness is like it's for everybody. It's not just for. <laughs> So maybe Ruben and I can give you some contextual information from across the district. Yep. Yep. This may help you with this or not help you with this decision. Okay. I'm not sure which way it will go. Each of you take a packet I sorted for you. There's a there's a eight one of these is in your in your uh, in your packet, but it's just easier to look at on an eight by fourteen instead of eight and a half by eleven. The first one I'll go to is the one that's the 8 by 14, which is the fun budget function for this current year by school. You've seen this in prior years. Mm -hmm. You'll notice if you look under the EMES um, column, to the right of that are percentages. So that's the East Montpelier Elementary School percentage as function of the budget. So the instructional services are a total of 1.4 million or 36% of the budget. Now that's not all the instructional services, but that's what there. And the cost per equalized pupil for East Montpelier, I'm just teaching you how to, remind mm -hmm. you how to read this, is, is $7,443. So just understand that you might, I, I sh after this was printed, I realized again every year, I should put solid black lines that <laughs> yeah, go right down the big EMES line. and right next to the Rumney column, because all that is EMESs. So I just wanted you to see what three columns are your schools and then you can look across. So up top. Where is the 7,000 again, Bill? Sorry. It, right it's under, 36. if you look, go 36. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. So though, if you take the large column that's Rumney to the left of it and to the left mm -hmm. of the EMES, that large column, that line, those borders, it kind of made some bold lines there. So up top, we've got some demographic data for you. We've got what your enrollment is pre-K through 12, as of October 1st. The next one is the ADM. The next one's the big number for tax rates, and that's equalized pupils, okay? It's 193.8 for this year. Then we get into square footage and number of meals per day and pre reduced lunch and sped count and enrollment of pre-K students. What we did was go down through and these are the major functions of the budget. And if it's yellow, it's low for across the district. Like you have a yellow for your guidance services. You have the lowest cost per equalized pupil. Um, and then the high, there's a high one there for which debt one? Service. Debt service. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but if it's green, if it's yellow, it doesn't mean it's because it's low, it doesn't mean you're necessarily good. And if it's right. green, it doesn't mean you're bad. Yeah. Just it's a way you want to look relative across. And one of the things that I said to another board last week was, hey, what is ours compared to the relative across? And, mm -hmm. you know, if it's if it's like, hey, ours is low or high, but it's only like 5% difference in the relative range. It's not that bad. 
Uh, we were looking one at Romney, like the paraeducator cost was 50% more than any other school in the district. Hmm. So, you know, it started to go, oh, well, we should maybe ask some questions about that. So this is really a tool to ask questions about and, and to use to kind of look at where are you as a school. And then down below are some other information divided by other divisors besides equalized pupils. So for operation of plant, we do it by square foot. And then we include in the capital fund, then the capital fund and debt. And then we have the food service support per meal per day. And then we have pre-K per pre-K enrolled and special education costs per SPED and student transportation. That's really not much different. It's a very small range from like 673 uh, to 694, so the range is really tiny. Um, there's some rows here we didn't put greens and yellows on because they are SU assessments going across and they're done by equalized pupils already. So I give you this as points of information um, for this year, but I want to take you to the other sheet, and I'm sorry I'm going fast, but the other sheet I think really kind of breaks it down for this current year and next year's budget that you just talked about. So if you want to take this sheet that's right here, if I'm going too fast, stop me. Yep. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the top here is a whole bunch of information and this really gets you to tax rates. So your total expense budget for the EM, for EMES this year is 3.9 million. I'm literally going to read down this with you because I think it actually makes it easier for understanding tax rates. The offsetting revenues that before you calculate for taxes are 183,000. So the total local ed spending, which is the numerator and getting to a cost per pupil, equalized pupil, is 3.8 million. You have a, this year you have 193.8 equalized pupils which gives you a cost per equalized pupil of $19,645. The next two figures are there if you were to receive any federal funds, you don't. You have some indirect things through the supervisory unions like Title II and services that we bring in there, but we didn't calculate that in. Any questions about how we got to a cost per equalized pupil? Because that cost per equalized pupil is what drives your tax rate. And because we're in a dollar yield now, your tax rate is $1.96, equalized education spending tax rate before CLA. Okay, I'll tell you what it is later on down below. So the budget you have in front of you without either of those positions, this is from draft one budget, so it's a little bit higher, but you were at 1.96 before, you're at 1.92, is 4.06 million. The offsetting revenues for the budget you have in front of you that from draft one was 172,000. So that gets you to a local ed spending of 3.89 million. Your equalized pupils, this is a draft from Michelle and Lori. We still, we were supposed to receive it statutorily by Friday. We still haven't received it from the agency what the equalized pupils are and we won't for a little while. So it's, we are, and their estimates are really good. Um, is 194.59 or an increase of 0.78 equalized pupils. I would have you just look across that row, you can see what's happening in other schools. Yeah, rough. Yeah. Okay, the, 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 I can tell you the district population in the next five years, we're projected to get down to a little over 1300 and we're just below 1500 right now. We're dropping. Um, so you can see that your cost per equalized pupil is 19,994 with draft one. You'll see that you're above the threshold. Black is for above the threshold. That's the next one. If it's red, it means you're, you're exceeding the threshold. I should say below the threshold. Yeah. Thank you, Alicia. Below the threshold of 192,000. <laughs> You'll see anyone that's in red there is above the threshold. Doty's draft two became below and Callis's draft two will become below Thursday night. Romney is not sure what they're going to do. I have a question about the threshold. The threshold, oh. I thought it was like a set like dollar figure. Too. It's not a set dollar figure. It's a, there's cost, it's, it's a cost per equalized pupil right. piece, and it's in excess of 100, 
132,000, 132% of the average cost. Set back, it, it, it's, it's, I'm really simplifying it. It started back in 2015, they locked the threshold figure and mm -hmm. said it could grow via CPI. The cost for ed, education spending and CPI is like two graphs like this. So it's getting greater as we go out because the cost of ed spending is going faster than the consumer price index. And so actually what that does is suppress, there's an inflation, there's a factor added to that 2015 state budget amount and then the 123% of that. But, but that it's not like a single figure for the entire state, like 90,500? Yeah, there, there is a, there's mm -hmm. a single figure for the entire state. Uh, so I, I'm just confused how Callis was 18,000. What happened was they, if you look before, they had revenues last year of uh, 109,000 from offsetting revenues for, and they went down for their offsetting revenues to 85, but you see they had $53,000 in federal grants where this year they have none. So they lost their Title I funding and they lost their small schools. I, but I guess my question is the local ed spending per equalized people, wouldn't it? Is a lower than yours, yeah. I've got to go back. It has to go back to what you were at 2015 as a district. Okay. It's a rate of inflation growth rate, too. Okay. So it's not just state. you got to look at all those. Okay. I, for more details, I can get the formula from Lori. That's, but that's okay. I just I, was curious. Yeah. I thought it was like straight up 19.5 for yeah. every school, every. Thing. So your tax rate for this year with CLA of 2017 was $1.90. And looking at if it were a merged tax rate across the SU, one district, you can see how we have the district column in the right. I even talked about that. Mm -hmm. It would be a dollar seventy nine. And if we applied your CLA from this past year to that, that means that the East Montpelier tax rate would be a dollar eighty seven, or three cents lower by the merged tax rate. So down below we have a line there. We'll have CLAs at the end of this month but what the differential is by town for tax rates between the merge and their draft one budgets. One of the other things that I want to tell you and give you warning about, East Mont uh, U32 has their last bond payment for their, one of their two bonds in next year's fiscal year, which is $430,000. When that bond goes away, because it's allow it, it, you guys know this very well, it's allowable expense that doesn't go to your ed tax. So if we stayed level funded, not level service, level funded in a merged tax rate, we will be $100,000, you can see we're $528,000 below the threshold right now. We would be $100,000 below it, and the health care costs this past year at U32 for this fiscal year budgeting for the next year is a $130,000 increase just on its own. So I'm forecasting that as a merged district will be there. I will also tell you, people said, well, maybe that means the merger is not good. When I look at all the individual entities, if you look at how far you are away, thinking Berlin might be the only district that wouldn't be in the penalty next year, thinking about salary increases and merge and health care increases for FY21. So we're looking at the FY21 year being either way, merged or not merged, having to look at some serious cuts around this SU because of the cost of, it's the human resource cost. And it's at, you know, when Stephen was asking, how's someone $100,000, it's the benefits and the salary increases. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to give you all that for context. The reason I do this is because I know in the transition board, someone's gonna be asking for this information. So I figured why not get it out early so you guys can look at it. I'm not sitting here advocating for the same amount of dollars you know, per equalized pupil at every building, but I want people, you, you can't have the discussion about what a student's need without knowing what are the dollars behind it. Because then we could go get the student performance data that you guys do a great job of looking at for East Montpelier, but looking at that for all the schools. And what does it look like for the student needs in every school? Because that's different as well. So what, what you said about the U32 bond, hypothetically, I mean, I know you said we have $130,000 healthcare increase. Yeah. But we would potentially decrease taxes by 300000 
or the district. So we, they have been that, planning yeah. that once that bond went away and they've been managing their capital fund, they need that money in their capital fund because so all their they ERVs want, okay. right now are failing on the roof. They're yeah. 20 years old. Okay. Right. And they've been taking care of it with their capital fund, but the plan is for that to go into the capital fund instead of instead having a bond. Having but a now bond it's again. not money, and Ruben, you, I'm going to stop you from doing it because you'll do it for me. Is It's good <laughs> fiscal planning, but it's pen, you, it counts against your local, yeah. your, your spending per equalized pupil. Where before, when it was bonded, it didn't count against your spending per equalized right. pupil. Mm -hmm. So planning ahead is, <laughs> isn't that? <laughs> no, planning ahead is fiscally responsible, but irresponsible from a tax <laughs> right. perspective. Right. Right. So because I, our legislature yeah. doesn't understand fiscal planning. Right. So this is all just so you have this knowing. I, I mean, I heard the executive board pretty loudly in, in <laughs> August when they said, just put the budgets together separately. And I give you, you know, one of the questions is, you know, someone said, Someone, one of your fellow board members said, well, I assumed that everyone would have the same cost, get the same amount of money per equalized people. And I said, well, I think there's a question before you say that. Should everybody or should not? Mm -hmm. What's that do for what you're trying to do for kids? Well, but that's, it's like asking the same question to the governor, you know, like when they were saying, you know, they're going to give 13,000. If, if we don't want it at that level, why would we want it at, at this level? It's uh, I, I think the, sh the answer is that only if all of the other factors are equal would we be able to take equal yeah. money. Yeah, so I, I just, right. I was saying to the, I've been saying this to all the boards, I just finished a paper that I wrote about two or three weeks ago about what's the, the some of the highest factors in student success in rural, super, with rural superintendent leadership. And it's, and from the district level, what's, really astounding is that there's very little research on rural superintendencies in rural districts. Most of it's on suburban and urban. But what's- Easier to study. Uh, it's, it's, well, it is easier to study in some regards. Sometimes it's easier to study the, the rural actually too. <laughs> um, but what it is is that that's not usually where the money is to support the studies. Right. Um, but there's four main factors. And the first one is being focused on student achievement. The second one is being willing to put the resources where the student need is and not necessarily saying all things are equal. So, so to go back to this budget, yeah. this, this is my summary of what I heard yeah. of this presentation. <laughs> Suggests we should be fiscally conservative and really be super mindful of adding positions because they're likely going to have to be cut in a year or two. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that in a year we're going to be looking at some. And Addison Central went through this. I mean, it was because they either they decide, are we going to just try to cut a little bit every year or restructure? <clears throat> okay. and as much as I don't like looking at it from a political angle, if we're looking at a three cent tax decrease, which I would like to just make note is vastly different than what the alarmists in certain mm -hmm. districts in the supervisory union have been howling about for the past three years-ish. Not that that drives me at all off the deep end. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 thank you, Floor. <laughs> Mindfulness, you know, we all need um, more time with we're not there yet. I would be very <laughs> mindful about feeling too comfortable about the fact that our tax rate is potentially going down. Mm -hmm. um, and I would encourage us to be real mindful of the optics of spending more. Um, it, you know, if. I'm kind of in Stephen's spot of not spending yeah. more. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I hear your presentation and I do understand that, but I'm seeing that I know that you say yellow doesn't necessarily mean good, but in guidance we are low across mm -hmm. the across the district. And if I subtract, I know that you said 152 might not be low, but if I subtract $50,000, 513 from our 152, 161 uh, below the threshold, we still are 101, uh, $1,648 below so 
so I just you know I so always say the that yeah we we kids don't have a year to lose if, if we have to make a change in a year from from now but we at least get the option to seeing if this sort of intervention will work and if we need the time I, I will leave it up to to Alicia and you to see didn't we reduce what that guidance is. just a few years ago we did only because they could we shared with Callis. Yeah. We 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 have tried the practice and it's worked very well of hiring together when we mm -hmm. both have a right. We've done that uh, a number of times and it's worked very well. So a person can have a full time position. Um, we did. We mm -hmm. went from a point eight. That's what I down thought. to a point five. Mm -hmm. And that's when Michael became the behavior person, isn't it? Um, no, no, we went mm -hmm. from a. That happened before Michael, and then we went down to a point six when Michael came, and then we went. That's when I remember five. that it got reduced. Yeah, it has been, um, and I think that the, with the intention behind that of being Michael would be here every day and could pick up, and he has, and he absolutely mm -hmm. has, and will continue to do that. It's just a different skill set. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and the other thing to me is that to remember that my part of what we why we have Michael is so that Alicia can be the instructional leader and mm -hmm. not the behavior police yeah. at school. So we can't that forget is, that. that. You've been pretty clear about yeah. that. That yeah. has happened. Yeah. I mean, I, I love working with kids with their problems. I love that. And I, mm -hmm. I still and you're good do at a piece it. Yeah. of that. But that is, I, that is not. So what, what I mean is that that's not why we reduce the, uh, the counselor. Well, yeah. well, you know how I feel on the yeah, yeah, budget yeah. part. Yeah. But we've also just spent time in the executive committee and at the full board talking about priorities and priorities across the SU. And this is not a priority across the SU. The priority across the SU is increasing, decreasing the math gap in literacy and math mm -hmm. and increasing the performance. But how are students supposed to, to achieve what they're supposed this, to achieve if they're not ready to learn? This, so, this is yes. a means to that. To that. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. hear that. Yeah. I would <laughs> hear this to me, it's too medical. much of a trickle-down economy theory. Same word. I want to see more direct instruction. There's all kinds of things we could do that would put the students in a better frame to learn more. Well, I think the course. But are we doing everything we can do that is very clear around improving what students can do and in, in decreasing the gap? <laughs> I, I'll just be quiet. I'm not no going to argue. No idea. <laughs> I'm not going to try to, too cute. to sway anybody. <laughs> Everyone knows where I stand. And, and it's even more so because there may be some services free to us by playing field. Well, so yeah, so why do we good. want to spend any money? If something free With may, may address it, or let's may, see how much. But that's it but that's social. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At minimum. We've given you I, I, confusing, but sorry. I, I, on wrong. my mind, for multiple years, has been getting us from the top ten in the state per pupil spending down to a reasonable level, and we're getting closer and closer to doing that. For the first year and a number of years, we're not battling the threshold, or being real cautious of the threshold in my mind that's a good thing and i don't want to start mm -hmm. saying okay we're well above it now so we can be more generous we fought hard to get where we're going to get it's not going to get any easier in the years ahead and i'm just adamant about not digging us another hole this year that we're going to find ourselves cutting programs next year to pay for the budget or cutting a classroom teacher and increasing classroom size I don't disagree with what you're saying. I guess I do have a fear of the playing field thing falling through. And um, and then, because I mean, I spend a good portion of time here. And I, I see that there could be, you know, I, I see people <clears throat> working with some kids and I can see where there could be help and need, needed and, and used. But with that being said, are there other are we looking everywhere that we could for some of these grants and, and fund, funding? I mean, is there, whose responsibility would it be to kind of? Our income level doesn't really open you, us up not, for grants, a, yeah, school you, grants. You, you, yeah. East Montpelier, I'm sorry, but the yeah. community here, Lindy's exactly right. We aren't poverty. You're, yeah, 
you're not. Well, but you see what I'm saying. Like, so we're hopefully the playing field thing comes through. But what if it doesn't? And we we see the need. Like, I mean, we get the, yeah, It's the same need that we've been seeing growing. Uh, I, this is not a new need. Right. This mm-hmm. need didn't pop up this year. Agreed. Right. So. Um, well, I totally understand the need on every level. I, you know, anecdotally, experientially, we all know those kids that that need more. Um, and on a human level, I would love nothing more than to give every child everything that they need. Right? I mean, that's that's. But I think given the realities of where we find ourselves, all of the different pieces of it, right? The, I think we're, we're pretty far into this budgeting cycle. There are a lot of unknowns. There are a lot of questions. There's a lot of unease and uncertainty. And I think adding new spending from a timing perspective now would be um, I don't think it would be. I, a good I don't idea. disagree. One of the things I was going to say was I also don't want to add bad, more bad blood, which I think is what you were kind of alluding to earlier. Yeah. So. I need to let you guys talk it out. Or that I asked that we should, then I to pull out. And so if you need it, to, no, you have to decide where you are as a board. You heard our information. Mm-hmm. You need to decide where you are as a board. That's one of my governance theories. You guys have heard it from me before. You speak as a board. So you need to decide that um, and talk about where you're at. So and I realize we're looking forward, not backwards, but we used to have a group home in town. And we had some real needs in the school with lots of Washington County mental health people in this mm-hmm. school. And I realize our society's gotten worse because of where I work and see, but I just, I'm not comfortable with more manpower. And I, I think the course you're offering is a great step for helping the staff deal with what is coming down the pike and what we are seeing. I think it's a great organization. He's going to do a great job with the course and understanding Mm -hmm. is so important for the professionals. I would go further. I I think it's the understanding is important for the taxpayers too. I don't, I don't think, I think people, we tend to get comfortable in our, view of Vermont being this idyllic place that doesn't really have problems. Well, read the paper. Yeah, I mean, but I, you just can't let people who don't work in schools understand what's really going on in the schools, I don't think. (laughs) My world, or our world in schools is just, I didn't know until I was a teacher that children were hungry, that children were beaten, that children were these things, because my parents shielded me from that. Mm-hmm. But then when you're a teacher and you're making sure your drawer is full of wheat thins and crackers and things that you can make sure they're fed, we have better food services now than they did when I started. But it's, you, you don't see, see it. You don't mm-hmm. see it. Mm-hmm. I, did you want to say something for <laughs> Well, I did. You know, I, I think I said my 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 share. I think that kids spend, you know, I don't know, eighty percent of the time outside school. They don't spend all of their time in in school, and the the skills that they gain from the guidance counselor are, and and it's that community. I see the playing field thing happening as more of a healthcare and other things like a like an on the side kind of thing, but anything that we can do. Well, we have them here. That's all we have. When mm-hmm. we have them here, then they're they're out, they're, they're out of, so we have those, whatever it is, eight hours, six hours to like really try to make a difference and make that connection with the parent if possible. And I think what the course that they were gonna be doing with Dave will, will be, you know, great, great resources and, you know, maybe teachers being able to do home visits like the kindergarten teachers do or, or something, but I, I just always feel like kids can, can wait. The income inequality is not getting any better in this country right now. Mm-hmm. So there's very little social mobility and we recognize that as a, as, as a community, we can do better. So if we, that's the best we can do here. And so, but I know that we have to deliver more with less, but it, it seems to me that even if it's just adding, you know, 
three more hours, or maybe it's not 0 0.5 or 0 0.25. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I would, I would like to see, as long as we understand that this impacts our achievement gap, that we stop kidding ourselves that mm -hmm. this doesn't impact, this impacts our achievement gap considerably. And so that's, I have and my say. I would, I would I actually add say. to that and say, <laughs> like, while I support the teachers getting that education, I think it's great. The more we rely on teachers to, to handle. Yeah. The 90% of what their kids need. 90% of what their kids need, the less uh, instructional time they might have for it as well. I don't want to add to the budget either. I, either. <laughs> I just want to like, state my so It's, it's my point. Right. I'd like to bring us back to that. Yeah. We've talked about it for mm -hmm. a long time yeah. and provide guidance if we want to add it or not add it. I'm hearing a pretty clear consensus <coughs> that we don't want to add it at this time. And if anybody is... I, I, I do not feel that I just to say that. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing unanimity. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'll clarify my statement that I don't, it's not a wish to just yeah. blindly raise taxes or of raise, course. raise money, but I also want to be very conscious about <laughs> making decisions for the kids, which is... Yeah, and I also want the, our administrators to know that if we're sending them to explore things and look at data and look at what might be needed, that that we have some flexibility, right? So if, if we're sent, because otherwise we should just say, you know, I, I don't know what we would say, just uh, go up and explore, but, you know, this is a command without... Uh, like they do at the legislation, right? They, this is what you need to do, but there's no resources. So if I'm sending you out, I want to say that there's but, some flexibility. But I think this goes back to our discussions around priorities. Yeah. Um, and, and I understand that there's, there's wiggle room in these priorities and, and there's a lot of interpretation that has to happen. Um, and that's a little bit by design as well, right? That's so that you as administrators can interpret our priorities and execute them in the way that you as mm -hmm. professionals, which we're not, see best um, yeah. so I even though it's a little bit of a there's a long tail on it I, I, I actually think that what we're doing with the priorities work is really important because it gives that really long term this is the thing that we're aiming for and if we want to adjust that by a couple of degrees over time to make room for more social services because we've decided that that's a priority. I think that's a healthy conversation to have as a board, either this board, probably not at this particular time, um, or as a full board. And this conversation I think may look really different in a unified board because instead of trying to solve this on a per school system, or on a per school building mm -hmm. basis, we would be talking about it on a school district basis. And I think that's really important. But um, if we are not identifying the need here, you know, like how, you know. Well, I think, well, I think I it'll think funnel, I think it'll work, work, right? yeah. work its way down. Yeah, the work is not going to stop. We, okay. yeah. we right. need to be know more how clear, to yeah. a clear direct A clear direction yeah. of what they need, I think. I think that'll be helpful anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though this may not be the answer from the board that you want, I, uh, I I'm glad that you brought it forward. Fine. I there, think I this is an important yeah. viewpoint and perspective and um, uh, yeah, conversation I feel to have. Yeah, yeah. So. And I think this was a, a great conversation for me to hear be, and for you to have because it is this is our current state, and it's not just East Montpelier; it's mm -hmm. in it's in all of the schools. Okay. Thank you. So, I oh, keep dear. some sort of time. That was a good long time on that. Do we need a motion or do the administrators understand our intent? No, what I just tell you the next steps with the budget is that we've heard your direction and we'll be taking it to the transition board. So that's the last of coming back to you for budget. That was another, can I, I've been trying to get us on task all the time. We're we approve this budget. No, you don't. 
Okay. You don't have authority to do that anymore. But so Talk this budget it. gets approved. Yep. There's nothing to say that all kinds of things couldn't change. They, that's right. Mm -hmm. All kinds. So of even if we put in fifty thousand dollars for something, mm -hmm. it may not happen. But it's that fifty thousand dollars could be used for something else. Correct. Right. Yes. So. Either way. Yet another reason Fair not point. to put it in. Okay. Okay. Three point two Act Forty Six update. Yep. So. Um, there's a couple things here that I need to talk to you about, and Flora can talk to you about the articles. Um, you'll need to think about your transition board membership. The articles have changed so that if you want to have someone else besides the clerk and the chair, uh, you can so appoint them for that. I would tell you that the town, right, as I just talked to you about the budget process and what the executive committee the, as you saw in my email from last week, we had to repost the warning, so that's now on January 14th. I believe that the transition board will be busy the first two to three weeks on uh, getting ready for an election and articles of agreement election. So I think they'll probably start the budget conversations in late January, beginning of February, um, with what I've been plotting out literally today. Um, the town so there's work for them to do if you remember the transition board has three responsibilities one to set up a if there's if an articles of agreement co committee comes back with amended articles they must warn them they don't get to choose whether they go or not that the committee has that power the um they set up a process for elections of a new unified merge board and they recommend a budget to the merge, new merge board. They don't approve it, but they recommend one to the new board. The new board then takes that approved budget, it takes that budget, does what they want, and then recommends that to the electorate of all five towns. So it's just the budget that gets, gets to the electric, to the electric. The electric. Well, well, the electric the, uh, the electric elects the board elections. members as well. And the board, they, board members. They, they, yeah, basically, the individual the articles are not. We're going to talk yes, about yeah, yeah, articles are, there's a lot more I learned today about <laughs> articles. So okay. there's a lot to go with articles, uh, which I really don't want to get into all the detail on articles in this meeting. Um, but there will be, because um, we could be there for an hour or two yeah. right now. The town, uh, I, I also put town reports on here. I'm just trying to give you this information and then I'd like some feedback and what you think. The town reports, um, I made a decision about a week ago that the town reports that will be in the town report, that sounds really redundant, <laughs> the school report the school that's report in the report town, town report, report. Yeah. how about that, um, will uh, we'll focus on what's happened this year and last fiscal year, because we always give at least a statement about the audit. But if you remember, about three quarters of that town report was, um, our, was information for the new budget. We don't have that yet. And if we were to have some, some of your fellow boards have asked about, well, wouldn't you put it in there if there was a injunction and we had to vote on a local budget? We're already past the time right now to be ready for town meeting if we were gonna run election, approve budgets the way we've always done it. We would still need a special, we now need a special meeting if we were to have six different districts. So we're not, we're off the town meeting timeline for budgets. Already three weeks, you know, we've done three weeks of difference. We're in the third week of it. And so we can't go back. We can't be ready for town meeting because everything has to be ready to go to print about January 10th. So things that would be in your town report would be the board chair's report, the principal's report. Um, some, I can't remember for Eastmont Clear without looking at the sheet. Um, East Montpelier, I think, does salaries. Yes, salaries are U32, Washington Central, and EMES, and then the Independent Auditor's Report. So those would be the only things that are in your school report section of your town report this year. There wouldn't be a whole bunch on the... Mm -hmm. There would also still need to be elections for the local board, because this board has authority over operations to June 30th. And then there would be one more meeting of that board to accept the audit and dissolve the board. Mm -hmm. 
So we should you. run. Yes, yes. I'm asking yes. you and all to run, run because yes. we need you to run to <laughs> fill out. The, you're you're running. You have the authority right yeah. now over local over uh, mm -hmm. local board over the local operation right now all the way to June 30th. So you know what does that mean? We need if I was going to get to be a minimalist, the minimalist is. <laughs> no, you really need to approve board orders, yeah. yep. and if we have a, either a staff or a student hearing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so so that you need to do your petition. Yeah. And the, the board so it would be minimum. You, you still do the same process. Right, right. It's you who, who and Stephen. It's you and Stephen. Okay. We'll so we'll get out more. I'm going to get out a lot more information and information out to the public. Um, I sent out, or not, I didn't send it out, but Krista sent out at about 5 o'clock tonight the first of a series of videos that are going out around Act 46. I filmed yeah, it this weekend, and it's all ready to go up on YouTube. It's about 13 minutes if you want to listen to Bill. Have fun. It's just to update on where we are with Act 46, <laughs> so, and I'm going to try to do it every week. I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Because I think people are trying to figure out timelines, what's really going on. Right, and what, I, what I'm saying there and what you can say to folks is it's literally changing weekly. I know. So okay. is the expectation that at town meeting people are going to elect? They're going to elect two different boards. They're going to elect. Okay. They're actually three different boards. There'll be a U32 election, there'll be an East Montpelier, and then there'll be, be a Washington Central Unified yeah. Union School District Board. And is that that one? <laughs> Is that, are we voting for people from all five towns? You vote from all, you elect two representatives from right. all five towns. Yeah. So if you sit here in East Montpelier, you'll, you'll vote for two folks from East Montpelier. Wait, it's not proportional to? Nope. And two for Berlin, and yeah. two for Callis, and two for Worcester, and two for Middlesex. Mm -hmm. And there will be ten, hopefully. And five for East Montpelier. Through next. Through, the, through, right. through December two thousand nineteen. Right, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. And so then, and the budget vote you had a preliminary date for May thirtieth. Uh, June April, actually April thirtieth. I've got for you right now. Sorry, April thirtieth. Yeah. I have uh, here's a timeline. You updated it. Yes. Good. A timeline. That's updated. I'd like the extras that are there back, but um, is this is getting updated? It's a little bit of an oddball question. Sure. If there was a member of this I board who wanted who wanted to run, no, I, I don't know. If this mm -hmm. is, imagine mm -hmm. one of you who's up for election also wanted to run for the merge board. Merge they board. Can do that. You can, you can, can you do, do that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. anybody I'm else gonna, could run. I think, I think, I think in the next, I think probably somewhere in like the first or second week of January, I'm going to give a whole thing about boards and running and elections and all of that. But frankly, I know I'm just not there yet. And okay. It because there's so many questions that I don't have answers to yep. that, and I'm meeting with the town clerks on Thursday. I'm buying them all lunch and saying, "Hey, right. let's sit here and figure this out." Okay, so sorry, one more question. So the transitional yep. board would run from now until, until town meeting. Well, yeah. or until when the board seats, seats. Yeah. because okay. there's It'll actually some, some qu one of the things yeah. I just okay. I don't want you to get. I don't want you to put it. I don't date. want an exact date. I just want. That's to what I'm saying. Okay. And I don't want you to even put like a town meeting on it, because oh, okay. things could move. But it's prior to July first or Ju That's right. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere there, so there'll be a new board. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So maximum of the transition board is till July, whatever Good. that date is. Yeah, that would be really late. Ju yeah, ju yeah. June thirtieth, but I don't think we'll get there. I well, well you know. but that's what I'm just. <laughs> Please no. You just never know. But that, I mean, that's the thing. It it it, it is moving. Oh, it's changing. It. Yeah, and changes it's all the time. Okay. So that's um, what I have for you, Floor. You've been in a lot of it. So what did I miss? Yeah, what more do you want to highlight? I don't think you've missed anything except we we're having a meeting on Wednesday on articles of agreement. We're still waiting for uh, a draft from the lawyer. We we have to form a 706 uh, proportional Act 49 committee, sort of like the 706B to write this article of agreement and uh, I know there's new information but we're still hoping to have a hearing uh, and have a vote uh, yeah the nice thing is that that it's can it's actually go going forward before the, the transition board. board so yeah. you'll see the dates on here I actually was able to because of the warning 
mistake that I made that I was able to kind of flip flop them and still get everything done. I mean, there are, there are a couple other meetings that aren't on here that are in my, I have a paper calendar now going in my office that has okay. all the way to June. And there's some, especially in the first two or three weeks of June, there's almost something going on every night. And, and Bill, you had, I thought we had talked about January 3rd or 7th. Yeah, I think I wrote it wrong on okay. here. Okay. I, I think you'll even see I spelled first wrong on here. Yeah, because yep. I, I thought January 3rd. This is how, I mean, this is, yeah. this is literally moving. Okay. What you saw in email, I haven't updated, I've updated this on Friday. I emailed you yesterday for, yeah, nice. for those yeah. dates. And okay. I think I checked this and I can't remember. The, the Articles of Agreement meeting, that long one, the minutes are on the website? Are Not they? yet, I think. Oh, no, yes, they are. They are. Yeah. they are. They are. They are. I looked and now I can't remember what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They are. We, we have one, uh, one article to, to do a second reading and the rest, I think we, I, I feel pretty yeah, comfortable. Pretty I think we did There's some a things good we need job. To go back to, but yeah. 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 So those minutes would include the articles? Yeah. What? Okay. I think, yeah. I must I not have the opened them. I don't know if the articles are up there. The, the articles are not up there. It but you can get it from what's in the minutes when they've yeah. talked about how they wanted to adjust them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a, a lot of community, and I think the main thing, at least for me, for the articles is going to be the, around community engagement and making sure that people understand that if you vote no in the Articles of Agreement, it's not voting no against consolidation but is voting no and we end up so. with the draft articles of agreement not what with what we drafted I think that's going to be super important so it's Especially that is that, that is going to be super important in this very narrow time frame that we and it that will we get have. really complex mm -hmm. yeah that, that it's much more complex than yeah. I thought. and I'm afraid that's where the rumors and the what people in the past, we've had people throwing out numbers and throwing out things that were not accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the loudest ones that people hear mm -hmm. and remember. So that's why I think your YouTube idea of constant what's real is really important. Hopefully, people pay attention. I yeah, and say, I, I, the only fear I have been that drives people to click on something and watch, we, I, we, I think, need to really speak our to as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and I think even people that have been very vocal against Act Forty Six are much rather have the new, you know, the amended the articles of articles. agreement that right. they're agreement. So, as far as I understand, they have pledged to help. So that should that should that should help. Because yeah. I think we've heard from the same handfuls of people and people who may be questions or it's fine with me aren't the people we hear from and that's where I worry about the loudest voices making people believe something different is happening mm -hmm. than maybe yeah so I appreciate the public notices that you're making mm -hmm. or I haven't seen one so tell me how I did I made a screencast by some of them I'm just going to do with my phone literally mm -hmm. and say I'm going to talk to you about a couple okay. things that are going on here okay. it is and throw it up there because okay. yeah. people are pretty forgiving with videos these days. Mm -hmm. Are we YouTube. gonna put them on Front Porch Forum? Uh, they're up on our. They're going up on our social, social media, media sites. Yeah. So the problem with Front Porch Forum is after I do two a month. Oh yeah. I start yes. getting charged, and yep. it's not cheap. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, if yeah. an and individual it, does it, you don't get charged. Yeah. If just a citizen posts it on Front Porch Forum. <laughs> Well, yeah. So was that a true right. of everybody? Or just anybody put something up there you might so want yeah. to look at some no, because they yeah. want the public to pay yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, but and I could add the link we Idi and I drafted a really long post that I shared with you on for the the signpost. I haven't put it up in front porch forum yet because I have to wait for it to be released in uh, mm. the signpost. So I don't like take the floor and thunder. we edited another one that is much smaller, but I wanted to clear some more dates before because that I one was I, so I, specific I, I so I might need to take far out with dates right now it's just too far it's we mm -hmm. have to think of other ways of communicating if we have to wait three months if we have to publish something now for a date say a date now that something's going to be published in two weeks it's it's too much of a gap because these things keep moving on mm -hmm. me yeah. I can't nail them down yeah but I, I guess what we were trying to communicate in this is the importance of attorney of attending that first uh, hearing yeah. The, you know that that organizational meeting is really important for the community to to be there. 
It's the January 14th. Yeah, January, yeah wait, the ninth. Gen 14th. 14th. Oh, the articles will the be, I'm uh, trying to keep the articles yeah, on the 9th. because that's when mm -hmm. you are, you know, deciding that you're voting, you know, by Australian ballot. You, that's when you're like or really organize, or organizing, that's why it's the organizational meeting. So it would be really important to reach out to everybody and be there. So which one do we want there. the public to be at? Both or the 14th, most importantly? It's okay. either one. One day will be the ninth. Will be the hearing for the new articles, yeah. and where there'll be feedback given, and then on the fourteenth is the organizational meeting, where it's it's held like a town meeting for all five towns. And the hearing, the new articles, the ninth is going to be at thirty two as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So will we even have a school meeting at town meeting? You will need to have, have a school one. meeting. Yeah. So Especially for this year. Make, you yeah. will need to present a warning. I'm not yeah. sure what your warning is, besides your. Besides your elections, I'm still working on what that warning should be. Okay. Yeah, we can still show our kid video, like be present for questions. There's going to be lots of questions about where we're going, and I'm going to do that. You're going. Let me book it right now. <laughs> One thing it, it just made me think of: I've seen Kari's postings about the budget, and just something you might want to think mm. about. I'll put something in this week's newsletter. Just that. It, you know where we're at but that might be something you want to mm -hmm. post we'll do that room okay. yep. did you do 3.3 point right no nope. i'm still waiting for okay um so we have gotten through 3.2 um, future meeting schedule and content. So this is something that I asked uh, Ruben that let's put this on here just so you could have a discussion as a board. I kind of already alluded to what you, the minimum responsibilities are, which are board orders and any hearings. Um, your meetings right now are, you know, you have a, there's a January scheduled for the third Monday and then there's a carousel scheduled for February. Um, and then in March, there would be a reorganization of this board, and um, I would assume it would say the same point. Um, I know with my time, with all the meetings, for all my focus needs for myself needs to be on the merger um, and doing all that work. So I think you'll have Alicia here and not myself for most of the meetings. I'll miss you guys, but I think I've got to work on that to keep the focus because it's just the project plan's getting pretty big. With, and the number of meetings between the different boards. I think the transition board is going to be meeting weekly, and then we're going to have negotiations and a couple other things going on. So, um, so I wasn't sure what you wanted to focus on for your meetings here, and and where you want to go with that. So that's why I was at. I just came with that kind of a question. But I think our board meetings are going to become the way to communicate with the public about where we are at every, you know, because the most trans the more transparent and information that we give them, the better that will be. So maybe not, we already are gonna have a, yeah. oh no, it's not, it's the 15th. You say we had a January 3rd meeting? January no, third 30th, week. Third, third, week. third week, yeah, the third 15th. Week. So that, that we have no conflict on the there, 21st. so. Uh, we, we might have to move it around to make yeah. sure that we use that time together to either talk about the articles of agreement or do some kind of community hearing. Maybe it's a, largely Act hearing. 46 update. Yeah. yeah. Board orders. Does that make sense? Board orders, Board orders and, and, uh, and Act yeah. 46. Yeah. yeah. And I'll continue sense. to just pr share principal's reports as yes. I've been doing and keep you apprised of what's happening. And I think I covered kind of three, four. I don't know why I made two pieces there for you. Okay. Um, I, mean, I think I just wanted to make sure that everyone was clear what the local board timeline was for responsibilities. And I told you already about June to June thirtieth. I think that brings us to page nine, administrative administration report. You I have really a question. Quick. In my house, funny. Lacey came home from when the governor was here and she was like, 
he doesn't even know how to cope. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He learned a lot that day. And he was very engaged. It's just cute. <laughs> are, are we going in order of reports, or can we ask questions to any reports? Ask, in, ask away from my mouth. I have a question on the uh, pledging of Alliance, Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. sorry, <laughs> didn't grow up doing that. So I'm, I'm assuming that there would be some provision, for example, for a sixth grader, or if there's a kid that doesn't want to do it, that doesn't need to do it, or? No. You always have an opt-out. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to, yeah. It's they not, don't, okay. It's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. No, okay. so it... It used to be something that happened here every day, and I think with honestly, I think with construction and when the flags left the gym, and it kind of just—I don't know what happened after that. It kind of I don't even some classrooms still do it and practice it most days. Um, we have a very, and they're actually here tonight, a very vibrant Cub Scouts mm -hmm. and Girl Scouts who take it very seriously, and um, a lot of members that are students here. Um, so what's going to happen on January 2nd when we come back, the first day back, we're going to have an all-school assembly and our Cub Scouts are going to do um, lead us in a flag ceremony and, and kind of teach the whole student body, those who've not done it. Um, and we'll do it together as a whole school mm -hmm. on that one day, which is what we used to do when I first started here. We did? Um, I don't even remember. You don't remember? I don't remember. Yeah, but we did. <laughs> and some schools so, yeah. have, you know, never got out of the practice and still do it every day. Yeah, as long as does there's the, still room for it. Like, there's I could just see that. some... Does the pledge still have the words under I, God mm -hmm. in it? Yeah, so it's just... <laughs> there's a whole group think piece to it that I am uncomfortable with. <laughs> but I, I think it's, 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 it's good as long as there's room if there's, you know, like... The protests that athletes are doing right now as long as there right. is i could see some especially as they get older yeah that we would encourage that not discourage you know that are able to not make them so in over the month of december we purchased a number of books to do as Veda allows the history of the pledge where it came from how it originated who wrote it um how it came to be into practice um and so teachers have been reading it to their students and having discussions. So it's not like we're, we're mm -hmm. just out of nowhere having this happen. They're, they've had a month to kind of prepare and talk about it. And in the upper grades, that may be a topic of conversation. I haven't heard that it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, every class has its own personality. And the personality yeah. of this sixth grade class isn't such where I could see last year. Maybe it would have been much <laughs> That's what I was issue. thinking. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's personalities. Um, but or, if, that, if that were to happen, it would be, it's, you know, it's all part of education yeah. and teaching them. And when they're out in public, you know, all of the games, my kids play varsity sports and they sing the Star Spangled Banner, right? And you salute. And it's just, it's out there. It's, mm -hmm. it's what happens. And, um, so I, I surveyed the staff to find out where are you at? What, you know, and they, every classroom teacher said they want to bring it back. So I felt like that was something then we should bring back. And do parents know about this, or is there going to be a other anything I would other than the suggest kids bringing some outreach? Yeah. What did you say? I would suggest some outreach. Yeah. So I don't know at the level of classroom mm -hmm. teachers what they have. Um, I can certainly share in this week's newsletter. I was going to suggest maybe doing that. Yeah. And the um, so the Cub Scout group, which is quite a few of our parents are kind of involved in that piece. So there, it has gotten out there, but outrage is, yes, important. I thought you said outrage. No, uh, outrage. no, no. Was no. no. Out <laughs> <laughs> but it's not what I meant at all. No. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I have, a, I have a couple of things to share with you that aren't in here that I said I would share, but I'll wait to see if there's other questions first. What is the Life is Good Kids Foundation? So it's, was great, it it was is, um, it's actually a, a part of the Life is Good, like mm -hmm. 
those t-shirts right brand except out of there's a whole mm. educational side mm. of it that works with children in, in drama yeah okay. um and we yeah, had a cool couple company. of our teachers who participated in a training down there out in boston mm -hmm. um and they went to a training over the summer and felt like it was incredible they brought a lot back to us as a staff this year um little things that you can put into practice in your classroom. So one example is, um, so it was Beth Parker and Jillian Zylinga who went down. There's something called news ball. You know, in, in morning meeting you do sharing and kids can share and for some kids they wanna share and other kids it's like the worst thing in the world and, and do not want to participate at all. So this is, this is called news ball and you have a ball and you can toss it. Um, but before you share, another anxiety producing thing for children and adults is not knowing the reaction someone's gonna give mm -hmm. you, right? Like you may say something and you think it's a great and they have a horrible reaction or the opposite. So before sharing your piece of news, you say, I'm gonna share something with you and I'd like you all to react by saying, oh wow, or go team or whatever. Oh, wow. so, so you aren't gonna be surprised by the reaction. Um, is something we've been doing in classrooms as part of morning meeting, um, so, and it just periodically in mm -hmm. some classes do it more than that. So, you know, it's my turn for the ball and I have something really exciting to share and I want you all to be really excited with me. So I'm gonna tell you. Or I, you know, have some really sad news and I want you to say I'm really sorry, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, or give a hooray, my team won the game last night. Um, so little things like that that just help us to be aware of kids and the pressures that we may put on them when we don't even recognize. Um, so anyway, they're coming here. Two of the, the people from the foundation are coming here in January to do some more training with our staff, similar to what they got, um, Jillian and Beth got. And we have um, Kelly Bushy and our um, school psychologist in the person who is leading the alternative program at U32 are going to join us for that also. Mm. That's great. Thank you. Um, fiscal report? I have one more. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So I had said in the, the grounds that um, mm. the, quotes. the quotes for yeah, the, we had right. talked about last month, the actual quote came in today for um, from Goslin, which is the concrete. Change it. Estimate. An estimate. We have we have two estimates. Um, so there's a huge range in price. Um, the the price of concrete is forty five thousand nine hundred dollars, <laughs> um, which is basically taking out that steel edging that is getting caught up in everything mm -hmm. and is sticking out and the hazard, um, and then pouring the sidewalk. Two, we have a an estimate. Um, for just putting down, um, taking out the steel, um, putting some crushed gravel in, and then putting some asphalt on top, which is, um, there's kind of two, two sections. We had them do it into two sections. One section was $6,200 and one was 6,800. So 13,000 for the whole thing to pay. Versus 140,000 or something? No, 45, oh, almost 46,000. Um, so, how often would we have to repave those? Uh, I can yes. tell you we paved the basketball court nine mm -hmm. years ago and we've and never done it again. Okay. We've done nothing right. to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's, so it's, it's not a high less long traffic. Long yeah. mm -hmm. um, it's more of a safety, really, and to actually have the sidewalk there yeah. because it's not right now. Um, so uh, those are, I, I will obviously not go do anything more with this concrete. I, oh, yeah. it's I hesitate to even ask this, but if we pave, are we going to be compelled to like create a paved ramp around the stairs? No, no, the stairs no, are, the stairs are okay. okay. The stairs, yeah, yeah. The stairs the stairs for some reason need uh, It's just yeah. not going to like change the classification of no, no, the, no, no. the egress this is path just or an anything like escape that. Path. It's, it is, and we do use that escape path every yeah. single day. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is I just, I, I want to make sure that. So I can't say that to you for 100%. For like ADA, uh, I'm pretty sure correct. it's the, I the just way that make sure so it doesn't you, change yeah. the uh, ADA change it, it. The the way it's being interpreted is starting to change, so I can't tell you that for 100. percent I agree with what Alicia's saying and what Floor's saying, but mm -hmm. I can't say that to you with no cert without any certainty. 
So then we need to just be aware that at some point after we do this, we may find ourselves having to put a paved ramp around the stairs. You might. I don't think, I think the risk is very small, but I will tell you that we've had some things change just in this past six months right. at other buildings. That's, that that's why I asked ADA the question. Code right. And then went back and it isn't. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that it's interpretation yep. of regulation. So who would interpret the safety, that? The architect. Whoever no, interprets it. The fire code. Yeah, but yeah. we can call it, yeah, Glenn review of this I think, yeah. I think that applies to everything we yeah. do. Yeah. We yeah. act as best we can as on best current we can. Yeah. practices. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not mindful, doing anything new. Being mindful that yeah. something may change, but mm -hmm. yeah. the best information we have in front of us is it's not likely to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And we're, we're not putting in something new, we're no, replacing it's not existing changing material. So. It's already so it's short a of a guarantee ruling, yes. but it's yeah. understood. No, I wasn't it's asking for a guarantee. Get. I just wanted to make but sure that we were wording it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The <laughs> way you were wording it, you were, so I'm not going to give you one. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. I just wanted us to be thinking about yeah. it because it's, has, we've experienced the no good deed goes unpunished mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. before. Okay. I can tell you the current practice, what Todd does, because he can't get the snowblower on the stairs, he shovels the stairs and he has this like little path on the, on the mm -hmm. grass that right. if you can't go down the steps that you just go into the grass that's also okay. plowed. Yeah. So. Thank you. He snowblows the rocks. <laughs> yeah. Right. He hangs them against the windows and they break and <laughs> they're expensive to fix, but... I think that's all. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Fiscal report. So there hasn't been much of a change here because we're running the budget. Um, I did, um, I mean, the, you haven't seen any updates since September. We haven't really, we had just uh, open enrollment for benefits, so we'll know that hopefully for January, but Lori is really, uh, she and her staff are really scrambling right now with a lot of work that they have to do not only with the, the Act 46, but all the new fiscal accounting system we have to move, accounting codes we have to change, and the new fiscal software system. I did want to point out something on page 16 to you, though. And one of the things that we've learned in the past two weeks in the Act 46 is any fund that's been designated by the, by the voters or given to as kind of uh, like the Jonathan Miller Fund that has a purposely given as endowed, that moving into a new organization, they must stay with the same intent. Mm -hmm. So like the capital fund that has put money has been put aside for this building, that would stay for East Montpelier. The, unless, the, unless the new board went to the electorate and asked That's them huge. to repurpose the funds, which they could do, they could say that electorate, the electorate could say those funds, um, but you, it is assumed by our attorney in reading and the way they've worked with other voluntary mergers is that those funds stay for the purpose, and they're the first ones drawn down. <laughs> so, a piece of good news. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> wow. Well, the only other thing on the front page of that page 15 is the reduction in the music teacher is not in here, right. so you will see mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that will be there. So there may be moving of funds in June that you want to do at that point, but um, I don't know more about that, John. And the uh, um, meal service hasn't been, uh, Lori and her crew are just, uh, we've been paying extra hours, so. <laughs> if you need something that we're not giving you food for, so. But it's not like we're mismanaging it or anything else, it's just, it's like, it's not, there hasn't been that many items of note. Executive committee? I think it's fair to say the last full mm -hmm. board mm -hmm. dealt with what the executive committee's been dealing with. It's really been focused on that student learning. Um, so, unless there's questions, I think what we presented at the full board was exactly what has been the, the workings. Policy committee. We haven't met since the um, full board meeting, and I reported then that we can't agree on our charge as a committee. So 
Um, we have to bring it up again. In this last meeting, we didn't have a quorum. So, so but, sorry, not necessarily related to this committee, but just in general, what happened? Well, we still have subcommittees. That depends on the new board. Yeah. I'm gonna recommend, I've got three I wanna recommend. Yeah. Um, but but I, there's gonna be, what, 10? 10, 10 members. 10 members, and then, okay. I, I did see that you looked at that student freedom of expression mm -hmm. policy and we didn't have a quorum to also oh, you did, it was just on your agenda at and it. you looked at it but didn't get yeah, to but it. we couldn't take any action because there were only three of us there okay. that we take that we have that one anyway we have yes. to follow it anyway whether they take action or right. the board takes action by the mm -hmm. way the law was right wrong. nobody had a problem with it that we're yeah. talking about it. Okay. And I explained that it was from BSBA, and it, yeah. we just needed to revisit it. Yeah, um, that was something that was brought up to yeah. our attention to make sure that so. we had it. So. It's okay. Thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. 4.6 negotiations. Steven. <laughs> Poor guy. Do you want? We we'll work on one item, which is... Yeah, so um, there's a... As in years past, there's a statement that goes out after. Are you shaking your head? No, go ahead. You're oh, fine. No, I, I don't remember what it, it is. It goes out after each meeting. I don't even remember um, what it is. And it's posted. But it's a general thing. And, and we've we've talked about um, one item. And we've kind of cleared up the, um, uh, the the manner in which we're going to conduct the meetings and, and those kind of things. So, um, it's ground rules are set. Ground rules, thank you. And this um, is just for one year, right? It's a one year contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that brings us to the action agenda. I am so sorry, I forgot to tell you something else. Oh. I knew there yeah. were two things. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> Um, we've moved on. Gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just to, to get to let you know. Um, and this is part of your what your ongoing operations of the building. We have um, we have some babies coming this year. And so we have our PE teachers going to be going out on a family medical leave um, to have oh, a baby. Awesome. His his hmm. significant other will be having a baby in April or around yeah. April. Um, so just know that that's coming, mm -hmm. and he's working on the paperwork now, but he's hoping to take some time off. And this doesn't go to you, but just to let you know, because um, it's going to go to the executive um, special educators, we have um, Ashley Gilstead, our new special educator, is also going to be having a baby in April. Um, so it's nothing you need to do anything about, but just yeah. so you know, we have some babies coming. Mm -hmm. that's and we'll be looking for some long-term subs. Sorry. <laughs> Good luck in the special ed field, because mm -hmm. there's such a shortage. You weren't kidding. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, action Agenda 5.1, except the audit report, which starts on... It was sent via email. email. It was emailed to you. Yeah. Thankful to not have can, one of those Can the motion just be to out. accept the audit report? Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we accept the audit report. I'll second it. So any discussion, excuse me, any discussion of the audit report? Could we just get clarification that there didn't seem there to be no any? No recommendations or okay. findings. There were some subtle suggestions that were already put in place. But no, no findings. Okay. No, no. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the audit report, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recommend approving the school quality committee recommendation for SU wide goal related to student learning to the transition board. I would make that motion. I'll second it. Do you have the agenda? Yeah. Oh, you don't. Well, I do. I think you have the agenda. Okay. So the three, the, the motion I made was exactly the wording under 5.2. Discussion? All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> Appoint representatives to the Articles of Agreement Committee. So this is the one that's happening right now where we need one member. 
You need one member? Yeah, it was, this is the... Um, I thought that we... The 5.5 is the one where you need to have three. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is just re because the articles of agreement was supposed to finish by December 3rd, and they're still working. Okay. Got it. So it's just kind of like you're reaffirming your mm -hmm. floor, floor being your representative. Would anybody like to... I'll make a motion to appoint floor to the articles of agreement committee. Second. Is there any discussion? Just to continue mm -hmm. what they're doing, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Just have a... Further discussion? All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Appoint members to the transition board. So you need two members. The clerk and the, if you table this, the clerk and the chair are the default. And uh, forgive me, who's the clerk? I am. Lindy. Okay. Is this different than the next one down? Or I yes, because yes. we only have five people. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> I have a recommendation for someone that's not on this board for the next one. Yeah. Oh, the next one doesn't have to be board members? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would cheerfully let somebody else have my spot <laughs> on the transition and I had, board. I had talked to you about it. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Lindy, are you in, or does Stephen want to? I don't want to do it. Um. You don't want to do it? I was hoping that you would do it. Well, thanks not because a lot. I, no, no, I want you to do it too, <laughs> but I was, because I thought that you would run for the board, and, and Stephen is not going to run. I'm not he up had to said. run. Oh. oh, you don't want to run? I'm in. I'm not up for the regular. You mean no, for, for the No, for the unified board. board. Oh. Just because Bill had said that we were going to meet. Once so if you're on this transition board, you can't run for the unified board. Right? No, yeah, you can. Oh, oh yeah, okay. you can. Getting confused. Yeah. Yes. No, you can. I think I, I think it may get. I mean, when I plot out all the work between now and first of March, I could see one or two weeks of not meeting, but I think it's going to be almost every week. Right but now, they'll be in I the evenings, say, right? not yeah, like in the, the evenings, not the articles evenings. where they were all day. No, no, no. They're evenings, and I think they're. I'm hoping they're a couple hours. I hope that we can speed up the way we do work a little bit. I would love to speed things up. We um, need to. Well, not exactly this process, but <laughs> yeah. we had a chance three years ago to yeah. vote, and we didn't. Um, so I was, I thought as clerk, I was on it, and I yes. was okay yes. to do okay, that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Phew. Got it. Great. Dogs that bullet. Okay. Um, so I have nominations for Flora and Lindy. I don't actually have a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint. Floor and Lindy to the transition board. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All of those in favor of appointing Floor and Lindy, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thanks. 5.5, um, recommend membership for an Act 49 committee. So I believe there's going to be three meeting at the most three meetings, possibly two. Could be more than that. Maybe I'm being hopeful. Um, for an Act 49 Articles of Agreement Committee. Can you just explain what that means? That means the, in order to ha amend the draft, uh, to amend the Articles of Agreement given to Washington Central Unified Union Board mm -hmm. um, from the Agency of Education, you need to have, according to Act 49, you need to have an Articles of Agreement Committee. Okay. It must be, um, it must have very similar configuration as a 706B committee. I said at the SU board, I thought we could get away with six people on it. After reading Act 49 again and consulting with our attorney, I was given strong advice that you should have the makeup be proportional, mm -hmm. which is what I sent in the email, that memo mm -hmm. I sent last week. So there's three from East Montpelier, three from Berlin, two from Calais and Middlesex, and one from Worcester. Mm -hmm. So all the boards except for Berlin, I was able to catch them in time, so they're appointing the correct number of representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, for East Montpelier, since you need three, um, you can appoint who you'd like. U32 will not have any representatives, and Kari's been part of the mm -hmm. subcommittee mm -hmm. right now, and I would recommend to you thinking about appointing Kari. I have not talked to him or asked him if he's interested in being on that, but I think I would he agree. Is. I think that's a logical yeah. person to be yeah. on it. What, yeah. So what do we do? Because he's East Montpelier. Him? You can appoint yeah. him. You and he's not willing. And he's not willing, then I would come back to you and ask for okay. you to have a special meeting to okay. appoint another person. But okay. he's been 
doing basically what this he committee will be involved, doing so I don't is him to is, not be, is I just, the, right. This committee will be doing the taking the recommendation for the committee that you voted before. Yeah. To so continue the work on so the articles like of agreement. New articles of agreement. Yes. Committee. Yeah. A proportional okay. articles of agreement. Proportionality to meet the legal stand so it can stand, and then this committee approves the articles to go to vote. The transition board has no authority over what the articles say. Right. So this committee, if so, all the transition board is uh, is empowered to do is to warn for the election of whether to approve the articles or not. Okay. So is there anybody else? I'm assuming you mm -hmm. would like to be there. Yeah. And there I was thinking that Lindy would, would want to be on that, but now she's on the other one, so I don't know what. Well, I think Darcy's just picked that straw right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just That's fine. Yeah. I think it's going to be hopefully two meetings, but two meetings. it might be three. Awesome. Yeah. Who knows? So I'm hearing Darcy, Floor, and Kari. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Steve. And a second? I'll second. second. Oh, How about you, no. you second. I'll second it, Linda. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there any discussion of the Article, f sorry, Act 49 committee membership? Seeing none and hearing none, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. And then I would take a motion to approve the board orders. I'll I would make motion a motion to, to approve the board <laughs> orders in the amount of $22,008.34. I'm pretty sure I heard a second. I yes. <laughs> I had actually wrote it down this time, so I think yeah. it was, it was really nice. Oh, it was in front of me, so I just yeah, assumed I'd make the motion. Um, I have Sorry. a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Aye. All of those in favor, please say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. Future agenda items. I think we talked about that before. It was Act 46. <laughs> yep. Community and engagement and reports. <laughs> yeah. um, board communication. I think we've talked about that too. And board orders. And I do believe that brings us to adjournment.